Hi, I'm Charlotte and this is Kerry. We're going to talk to you this evening about our visual arts courses. And if you do have any questions. So I'm just trying to find my PowerPoint. If you do have any questions, um, please make sure that you um, tick the button. There's a question mark that's up at the top right hand side of the um, of your screen. And tonight, tonight I want to talk to you about our visual arts courses. So at Wilbur Force College, we offer the broadest range of visual arts courses in the area. These include A-levels and level 3 BTECs that are the equivalent to A-levels, as well as level 2 BTEC for those that need to resit their GCSEs and an art foundation course for those that have completed their A-levels or level 3 BTECs and wish to explore more areas of art and design before moving on to university or employment. I'd like to begin by talking about our A-levels. <clears throat> for A-level art, you will explore drawing, painting, printmaking and sculpture, plus digital and new media approaches. You will enjoy working in our large studio spaces and have access to the laser cutter film, etching press and 3D printer. <clears throat> For A-level photography, you will explore many different ways of working, including how to use the different settings on the DSLR camera, such as manual and aperture priority. You will explore image manipulation, photo montage, digital editing techniques. We also use Adobe Photoshop. We use it as a creative tool rather than just as a means to correct a photo. You will be introduced to the magical side of our fully functioning darkroom and use traditional techniques to create photograms, pinhole photos and make experimental images from your digital photos. Alongside this, you will also have the opportunity to explore other time based approaches such as video and time lapse and also to work with new technology like our laser cutter. For animal textiles, you'll discover different ways of working with textiles like felt and paper making, screen printing, embroidery, block and mono printing, fashion illustration, design and construction. You will learn how to use heat presses, laser cutters, etching presses and state of the art embroidery machines. With all three A-level courses, that's fine art, photography and textiles, you will set your own project brief and explore and develop your ideas through guided and independent study. You will work um, on um, learning different techniques at the beginning of the course and then around, usually around February time, that is when you will start on your own project. So you'll be fully prepared for doing any independent work. You will also experience trips and visits and have opportunities to enter competitions and exhibitions such as the Ferens exhibition. Now for those of you that want to study art all day long, we also offer the BTEC Level 3 Extended Diploma in Art and Design. Now this course is a full-time course, and it's equivalent to three A-levels, but you'll stay with the same group all day and you will have different teachers that will teach you some of the different projects and the different art and design disciplines. In the first year, you'll study a, a project entitled Form, where you'll explore natural and man-made forms through art and design, illustration, textiles, um, 3D, sculpture and photography. And then you'll also study a illustration um, project where you'll illustrate a children's poem for a poetry book. And you'll also explore a project called The Senses, which is an art and design project, which you'll develop into a project of your choosing. So if you prefer fine art, you'll create a fine art project. If you prefer graphics, obviously you'll create that, etc. We also offer the National Diploma in Graphic Design. Now this one is worth two A-levels. And for both the extended diploma in art and design and the graphic design, you just need four GCSEs or equivalent, grade nine to four, including grade four GCSE English. And for those of you studying level twos, it's merit grades that you would need. 
Now for the um, graphic design course, you will study a packaging project first. You will try to rebrand um, T to appeal to the 16 to 25 year old market. And um, you research your target audience, you research your client, and then you develop ideas to create the brand. You will also create the marketing to go with it. So there'll be a website that you'll create and a TV ad. You'll also, after that, you will design your own um, theme park called the Time Experience. And again, you will decide in all the, um, what, what, how you will approach time within that. So whether it's the dinosaur era, whether it's space and time and the futurist and futuristic. And if you're interested in interior design, you may explore that. If it's branding and 2D graphics, then you may design a poster, a billboard, a flyer, the website. And maybe if it's some sort of interactive art, you may design the um, children's pack. And then for both of those courses, in the second year, you will study a unit that helps you to develop your portfolio and your CV and apply either for apprenticeships or for university. There will also be some units in the second year where you'll explore graphics and all art and design in more detail. And there will also be some exam units in both the first year and the second year. In those, um, in the first year, there'll be a, an exam where the exam board will give you a starting point and you will develop your own project. And there'll also be a contextual art history exam. And then in the second year, um, there'll be another exam where it's like a final major project and it's set by the exam board and you develop a project that plays to your strengths. So again, um, whether it's in graphics, it's branding or it's packaging or merchandising, etc. And in art and design, if it's fine art that you prefer or art and design or, or digital design, then you would um, create a project to do with that. Now, um, our students love our fantastic facilities. We've got a really, really good department down here. Our facilities cover obviously textiles and fashion, and screen printing, um, we've got the photography um, te technology, we have the graphic design packages, we use Illustrator and Photoshop, and then obviously we've got fine art, printmaking and painting, and anything that you want to do. We've got the workshops as well that between design and engineering and art that you can use. Um, we have open access to computers, software and printers. And um, we have talks and workshops from artists and professionals and we give you exceptional support. We encourage you to be independent and to develop your own creativity and we are there for you to help you whenever you need. We also go on lots of trips and visits such as um, our ships have included going to London, to the Yorkshire Sculpture Park, to Salt Mill at Saltair, where we see the David Hockney joiner work and his iPad work. Uh, new designers, Leeds, the Yorkshire Coast, and obviously also, very importantly, to university degree shows. We encourage our students to enter competitions and exhibitions as well, and have had a quite a lot of success within that. And also we help our students prepare for university and apprenticeships. And this could take the form of, for example, a mock interview. And we gather resources and questions that students have been asked previously to interviews. And we add those to our bank of questions so that hopefully they're prepared for any eventuality and any question that they may, might get asked. University interview. Um, these are just some of the university courses that our students have gone on to. So that's fine art, graphic design, illustration, photography, fashion, textiles, concept design, game design, interior design, architecture, theatrical makeup, and lots of other courses. Um, for employment, um, lots of our students gain employment at local design agencies such as SGS International, Sharp Iris, Sunoco Trident, Fred and Squidio. While other students move on to other areas such as London, Newcastle, Manchester, other UK cities or have gone abroad as well. 
For our students, we've also progressed to work freelance as freelance designers, photographers, community artists, teachers, illustrators, architects, animators, and lots more careers. Including the Home Daily Mail. Talk yeah, about we do, yeah. <laughs> Journalism. Now here's the next student I just wanted to share with you. So Lydia Caprani, she studied um, graphic design with us and then went on to study graphics in Leeds. She's now a graphic designer and a community, a community artist and illustrator. So you can see her work around full. She worked on some of these murals that are down Heson Road. She worked at one that um, you can see from East Park. It's at the side of one of the houses. And um, you can see her there actually creating one of the murals. She's painted some of the moths and she's done lots of illustration work for local cafes and businesses. Callum Major and Hannah Bales are our ex-students. Um, Callum studied graphic design with us and then our art and design foundation course. He went, then went on to become a freelance graphic designer before eventually working for the animation company Scudio, where he's become head of production. And Hannah Bales is a vi video producer there. She again studied our graphic design course and A-level photography. She went on to study our art foundation course and then BA honours at Game Design in Hull, and then she went to teach on that course before working at Scudio. And here's Amy Smith, she's a fashion accessory designer. She studied A-level textiles, fine art, maths and graphics at Wilberforce. She then studied textile design for fashion and interiors at the University of Huddersfield, before becoming a senior designer at a global fashion accessories company based in Manchester. So these are just three of our success stories from, from many. Um, Holly, um, she's gained awards and recognition. Um, she went on to study at Brighton after studying with us and she won the Ferens Art Gallery Student Award in 2018. And then during lockdown, the work of three Wilberforce students was featured in an online exhibition um, and these were highlighted on BBC News. And this just shows that during lockdown, our students have worked remotely and they've done really, really well. We've been really proud of them. We've used Teams, Microsoft Teams, to deliver remote lessons and communicate with our students virtually. We're really, really proud of them all. So, what we'd like you to do is to set up an Instagram account for your artwork and then follow us on Instagram. So we don't want anything to do with your private Instagram. We want it just to be for your artwork, whether it be photography, textiles, whatever you're doing, graphics, illustration. So what you need to do is you need to set up an Instagram account and then you need to follow us. OK, so you need to follow us at Wilberforce underscore art or if you're particularly interested in the photography side of the, of the courses, you need to follow us at Wilberforce underscore photography. OK, and then we can then um, follow you back. Now, the other task that we'd like you to do ready for September is you may already have one of these, you may be using at school already, but we'd like you to set up a Pinterest account. So we want you to create Pinterest boards that demonstrate your artistic interests. So I feel this will be a really good way of getting to know how you sort of see the world and getting to a little bit of an insight into your personalities as well. So the reason behind this is that showing an understanding of the visual world doesn't just have to be about what you produce as an artist, but can be demonstrated by what you see and what you reference in your visual library in your head. So how you see the world and what interests you are an important part of the course because these experiences and interests are what you bring to your lessons and hopefully share with others, either through discussion or through the work that you produce. So to give us an insight into how you think as an artist, we would like you to create a visually exciting Pinterest account, which will comprise of hopefully more than one board. So what you need to do is you need to create a Pinterest account at www.pinterest.co.uk and keep it separate from any personal family Pinterest accounts that you may have. Again, like the, like the Instagram account, it has to be nothing to do with your personal um, accounts. 
and we'd like you to create a series of Pinterest boards and you need to aim to pin at least 50 images, which sounds like a lot, but actually when you get pinning, you'll probably end up doing a lot more than that. You can choose anything that reflects your arty interests so we get an idea of who you are. So your Pinterest boards may include, obviously, photographs, so from photographers that you admire, photographer inspiration, photographic techniques, stills from films, TV, any of those sorts of things, fashion trends, illustration, textile design, artists that you, that you admire, artistic inspiration, so might be a specific technique that you're really interested in and you might um, want to put that on a board. You might love working with oil paint and a palette knife and have loads of textured examples of really chunky paint. Um, graphics, packaging, you might be interested in photographing crisp packets and tea boxes and all that sort of thing and, and uh, find that as very inspirational. Um, LP and CD covers, you might particularly be interested in famous people, characters, cartoons. You also might be interested in issues that concern us, such as um, things that were highlighted within the blue planet. So many things that you could include on those boards that would give us, you know, an, an idea of what you're like as an artistic person, how you see the world, what your views are. And the other thing is also that these boards will form our initial discussion points and icebreakers in September. So you'll be sharing your boards with other people who will be potential, potentially new friends, hopefully in the group. So please, please give it a go because we're really excited to see what you might produce. So here's a, um, an illustration of what you may see when you set up a Pinterest board. And here are some key dates. So at the moment, it's January to May, we're doing interviews and virtual open events like this one. We'll have some welcome days in June. So if you um, decide to enroll and we offer you a place, then you'll be invited to welcome day in June, where you can test the courses, try them out and make sure that they are for you. And then in August on results day, you can, we'll be in college, you can contact us, get in touch if you need to, you sort of think, oh, I want to change the courses that I've enrolled on. And then in September, you will start the course at the beginning of September. So catch up with us. So all of the Wilberforce live videos will be on our website after the event for you to catch up at the time to suit you. So there's the link. And you can also apply online. So again, visit the college website and you can apply. Once you've applied, we'll contact you as soon as possible to arrange an interview. Now then, if you did have some questions, um, just this is just a reminder, in the top right hand side, um, there's a question mark. So if you click onto that, you can ask some questions. And we did have some questions that had already come through, so we can start to, ask, to answer some of those now. Yep, so um, Phoebe um, asked a question and she said, can I study A-level fine art, photography and textiles? And that is a yes, you can do. You can do that option because each A-level is worth one single A-level. So you, you can choose up to three and can do all of our creative courses. That's fine. They do complement each other quite nicely. So what you learn in fine art, you can often apply some of those techniques into your textiles or your photography and vice versa. Obviously the work has to be very different, um, but you can use those skills. And because you know our resources, and how to use them, you can use those resources across the different subjects. So that is not a problem at all. You can do two of just two of those if you want to, or you can just do one, or you can do all three. Got a question from Matthew here, so I'll answer this one. It's a photography based one, and Matthew wants to know if you need your own camera. Well, it's advantageous to have your own camera, but not essential. We do have uh, Nikon DSLR cameras that you can um, sign out um, for a week at the most. Um, and uh, but obviously, if you do have your own camera, if you might, if you really get into it and you might get one for Christmas, it is an advantage because you've got access to it at all times and you become familiar with it. We also don't mind what cameras people have. We just happen to have Nikon's. We also love Canon's and Samsung's and Sony, anything Panasonic. We, you know, we're not camera snobs. OK, so any camera um, is, is most welcome, but not essential. Now, there's a question here from Lily. 
Um, what's the difference between BTEC courses and A-levels? Um, well, the BTECs that we offer, level three BTEC is the same as an A-level. Um, just the ones that we offer, the art and design BTEC level three is an extended diploma, so it's full time, so you wouldn't be able to do any A-levels or any other courses alongside that. Just occasionally somebody needs to reset the maths, so they might do the reset alongside, but it is a full time course. But generally the, the BTECs have a slight, um, like an employment twist to it as well, so we sort of, the briefs that you get given there's a link to employers employment and working in the world in the creative industries and the BTEC in graphic design is worth two A levels so you can take up another course with that so some people do A level photography or fine art alongside that textiles or they may do business or English maths whatever it is that you're interested in. Molly here says, what are the classroom sizes like? Well, they're good size, aren't they, Kerry? <laughs> yeah, really? yeah, we've got good size classrooms. Yes. And the classes, I've got a graphics group that's got 18 students in it, and then some, I've got another group that's got maybe 10 students in yeah. it. So you sometimes, somewhere between sort of 10 and 18, maybe possibly 20. But so all... relatively small compared to your schools and GCSE classes. Mm -hmm. so you get a lot more one-to-one -one, um, time and tuition. Um, there's one regarding trips here, but I think we probably answered that, didn't we, about um, about going on trips, but as you saw from the slides, yes, yeah. we do. Yeah. Um, Evie here says, uh, what would a typical week be like studying A-level textiles? OK, so if you study one of our A-levels, um, you get four and a half hours tuition per week on the A-level, and then you expect to do the same for homework afterwards. But then alongside so the A-level textiles, you could choose two other A-levels like the fine art or photography or like business, English, maths, whatever you want to do. Or you could take up something like the BTEC in graphic design. But for each A-level, it's four and a half hours of study per week. And you will have some study time that's free in free time for you in college. So we advise you to use that to study. But you, we do have some cafeterias that you can sit in and we have the library that you can go to study in. And in the art department, we have a shared computer room that you can use to study in. And in normal times, not so much in COVID at the moment, but in normal times, we have an open classroom policy where if you haven't got a lesson, but you need to go and catch up with your textiles or your fine art or your photography or your graphics, you can be in that room when there's class in there or when there's not. And you can do your own independent work, but just at the moment, it's slightly different, but hopefully back in September, we'll be back to normal with that. Yeah. Jordan's got one here, which I'll uh, answer. So do the courses get um, full up quickly? Well, photography does particularly. Mm -hmm. um, what would you say about the others? Yeah, um, graphics does as well. Graphics does, doesn't it? Yeah, oversubscribed. Yes, yeah. Um, textiles as well, mm -hmm. usually runs in one option, so yeah. that also gets so quite It's really good to, to get your name down, yeah. isn't it? So, yeah, if you're keen, yeah. absolutely. So, you as soon as you can. Yes, absolutely. Um, Harrison, my grades are only just fours. Will I have any issues getting onto A level photography or B tech graphics? With fours, you will be okay. As long as you get four or more fours and, and above for the, um, for the graphics, it would have been B tech. And you need five grade fours or above, or doing the photography or the A levels. And um, for all of them, you will need the level four above in English because there is a written component for all of them, and having the English will make it a lot easier for you. And um, we just make sure do it, do what you can at college at your school, sorry, to make sure that you get the fours or above and everything else. Yeah, another one here, a bit similar, I suppose, in that Lewis was wondering, he's saying, I haven't studied art since year nine. Will I be able to study graphics or art? Um, that's a yes, if you can show as a portfolio. Mm. Obviously, as long as you've got the grade four or above in sort of four or five um, GCSEs. Um, but if you haven't done any arts, I know a lot of you that may be expecting good grades haven't been able to go down the creative route at school. They've been pushed into more academic um, subjects. So if you have your own portfolio, please get in touch with us and show us your portfolio and then we can advise you whether, oh yes, your your work looks like it would suit photography or it would suit textiles, it would suit art, mess with the graphics or our extended diploma. We'd just like to see the work that you do and shows your interests. Often like working from observation, showing your drawing from observation mm. was really helps so we can sort of see 
type of work that you would do. Yes, yeah, so you're not just sort of copying things that you're actually observing. Yeah, not observing with a camera. Absolutely, well. and the Instagram would count towards portfolio mm -hmm. too. Yeah, it would. Yeah. yeah. And um, I think this will be this coming through the last one. Um, Chloe, I'm predicting a mixture of threes and fours at GCSE. Will I be able to study art at Google Falls? Well, if you've got a mixture of threes or fours, two, then it? it may be that you're going to have a level two course. Yes. So a level two is like we sit in your GCSEs and mm. it's, it's equivalent of doing two art GCSEs. It's like a GCSE art and photography, say. Mm. Plus you'll redo math and English if you need to, to get yourself up to the correct grades for getting onto level three. So you would need to get merits in that level two course then to be able to proceed proceed to level three the year after. Mm. And we have lots of success with that, don't we? Lots we do, of students yeah. go on to do A-levels from that yeah, and do. do really, really well. They do, yes. yes. Yeah. So I think that, I don't know if you've got any coming through, Kerry, I think that's nearly it, isn't it? Yeah, as soon as you just do need to wear a uniform. Oh, yes. Yeah, you can choose whatever you want to wear for this. Obviously, um, you don't have to wear a uniform. <laughs> no, you, you you wear what you want. Yes. Um, but it's just what is ever practical. Remember, if you are doing art and design, yeah. you don't want to wear your best clothes because you may end up with um, paint of your, your clothes, etc. It's also a good time to express yourself, though, isn't it? Yeah. We yeah. like to see. We. It's really great seeing what our art students, visual artists, are wearing. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Yeah. You can tell art students from the rest of the students yes, in college. Yes. Definitely. OK, so yeah. I think that's it for the questions. Yes. But it's been lovely to meet you and we're yeah. all looking forward to seeing you in September. Yes. And hopefully may meet you before in the welcome days um, that will be in June. Yes. OK, right, so, so thank, thank you, you everyone. Good luck with the GCSEs. Bye everyone. Right, bye. Bye.